today on All Rights Reserved. Does copyright law have a place in free trade agreements and why or why not? I, I do agree with the copyright law as a whole. In a way, I don't because there's certain things that I don't think you should have to go and get permission for. So I guess when it comes to free trade, like I said, people are just going to do whatever they want in the end. Orphan work is a copyrighted work that due to one reason or another, such as the original copyright holder being deceased, the ability to get permission to use a copyrighted work is not possible, and using the work without permission is legally risky. The last thing we need is TPP, another law covering copyright laws that expands into the world. What's the point? We're wasting our resources. We're wasting our tax dollars. We're wasting people who have other things to do. Copyright, 1790. The encouragement of learning. That was its sole purpose then. Does it seem like we've strayed? How do we go from encouraging learning to protecting rights of creators? How does ensuring profitability promote progress? Copyright should be balanced, both creators and users, but it's not anymore. This is All Rights Reserved, a podcast advocating for true copyright reform. Hi, welcome to All Rights Reserved, the copyright advocacy podcast with a psychic coast that can predict the future. And boy, does it look grim. Anyone? Okay, I'm not really psychic, but I am your host, Rico Robbins. And I do predict that the future does look grim if President Obama has his way with an agreement he's actively pursuing. Now, not to be political, but I agree with Obama on a lot of issues, and I still say overall, he is a good president. However, what I do not agree with is, well, what is almost his deal with the devil. Now, on to a slightly different subject. As I go on and record my roundtable discussions over these past few podcasts, One theme I hear overall is that we need to stop piracy. We can't just download movies and music for free and not pay for it. For the most part, I agree with this stance. Illegal file sharing and illegal downloads need to be, well, illegal. In fact, one episode of The Simpsons dealt with the subject of online piracy. I may not be a huge fan of The Simpsons, but I must say that episode in particular, Steal This Episode, was one of my favorites in the recent years. And yes, there will be some spoilers. You have been warned. The episode begins with Homer getting fed up with the modern movie-going experience from hearing too many spoilers of a movie he wants to see at work and elsewhere, to all the pitfalls of going to see a movie in theaters in the modern day. After getting kicked out of the cinema, Bart teaches Homer how to illegally download the movie. Later, after creating a makeshift theater in his backyard to screen illegally downloaded movies for his neighborhood, Marge finds out and is upset to the point where she sends in a confession and money to the studio. This prompts the FBI to arrest Homer Simpson. One thing leads to another, and when Homer is found guilty in court, before sentencing, he retells his story in the most dramatic way possible. This prompts the Hollywood producers, who were there to testify against Homer, to immediately drop the charges and buy the rights from Homer to make a movie based on his true story. Yes, the whole thing seems a bit far-fetched, but what if I told you my synopsis I just provided, while normally legal as a fair use, could one day 
be a criminal act. This reality could be happening if Obama's so-called free trade agreement, known as the Trans-Pacific Partnership, or TPP, becomes the law of the land. The TPP was negotiated by 12 countries along the Pacific Rim, including the United States, Canada, and Japan. Now, unlike bills like SOPA and Protect IP, the TPP is considered a treaty, and therefore, was negotiated in secret without any input from the public. And now that the deal's text is finalized, under the fast-track legislation, once Obama signs the treaty, it is sent to Congress for a simple up or down vote. No text can be modified, and no filibusters are allowed. However, not everyone was shut out of the TPP's negotiations. Corporations that would be affected the most by the TPP were allowed in. And when it came time to discuss the intellectual property chapter, boy, did the MPAA and RIA step up and fill in their mind about piracy. However, their stance is that tougher enforcement of copyright law, with even drastic draconian measures, would be the most effective to stop infringing activities while promoting creativity and innovation. That couldn't be farther from the truth. Unfortunately, thanks to these closed-door negotiations, the TPP has become like a deal with the devil. Obama is pressing the free trade part as a TPP as a way to compete the most against China, who is not included in the international agreement. That may be true, but from various sources I've heard, it doesn't do what he's promising it will do. Now, like you deal with the devil, something needs to be given up in order for it to be a deal, in exchange for the so-called free trade that the TPP claims to offer, what's traded away, in copyright terms at least, is several users' rights and protections, and the ability to reform the law. In the end, like any deal with the devil, it will backfire, and we will be worse off than when we were prior to the TPP. Now, Obama is pushing the TPP as a free trade agreement. So, does copyright and other forms of intellectual property have any place in a free trade agreement? This is a question I asked my peers so I knew what they felt about the issue. Does copyright law have a place in free trade agreements and why or why not? If I'm thinking this right, they should have um, yeah. some type of leverage over any free trade agreements. And yeah, I definitely think that copyright so has a place in free trade agreements because I think we need to protect our resources just like they need to protect their resources. Does copyright have a place in free trade agreements? I'm not sure either. I guess I'm not really sure. <laughs> I mean, I, I do agree with the copyright law as a whole. In a way, I don't, because there's certain things that I don't think you should have to go and get permission for. I mean, I guess for me, I guess people are going to use it for whatever they want, whether you tell them it's right or not. So I guess when it comes to free trade, like I said, people are just going to do whatever they want in the end. 
Now, I have gotten a variety of responses from this, from being unsure whether it does or does not have a place in free trade deals, to saying that it should be allowed in these types of agreements. However, I don't think it does have a place in free trade agreements. According to Google, the definition of free trade is international trade left to its natural course without tariffs, quotas, or other restrictions. Free trade would really only affect the sales of goods overseas, and that can include goods that contain copyrighted content, such as CDs and DVDs. Now, in the US, there is something known as the First Sale Doctrine. Essentially, this means that copyright can only control through the first sale of a copy of a copyrighted work. Any subsequent sales or transfers of ownership of that copy cannot be considered copyright infringement, assuming that the copy is a physical copy. So, in other words, if you give away one of your CDs or you sell a used DVD copy of a movie you own online, these acts aren't considered copper infringement under the first sale doctrine. You already legally bought the copy in the first sale, so any subsequent sales of that copy aren't infringing. And the courts ruled that this applies to international sales in both directions. Now, this would apply to free trade. The only way free trade would apply is if you're exporting CDs, for example, to another country. The only way copyright infringement could occur would be essentially equivalent to mail fraud, or opening up packages of CDs to steal a copy of the CD to upload it online. And if you really want to stop the control of bootleg or other legal copies of things, again, the only way it could really be enforced in a free trade situation is through what I would consider mail fraud. Adding restrictions to exports or imports to stop copyright infringing goods from entering or exiting the country essentially makes it no longer free trade. Inherently, copyright has no place in free trade agreements. Free trade and copyright law are simply incompatible in every sense of the word. Now, on to the TPP. The text is published in all countries a part of the deal. It consists of over 25 chapters on a wide range of issues from labor to dairy regulations. When it comes to the intellectual property chapter, I'm convinced to compare it in to SOPA in several ways. However, the USCR well aware of this concern, comes to calm down these fears in their frequently asked questions page. The USTR insists that the TPP is nothing like SOPA or PIPA. They claim that the TPP respects the free and open internet while respecting existing laws and tools needed to stop copyright infringement online. The problems with this logic is twofold. First, the idea of a free and open internet in and of itself is not tied to intellectual property law, but that's not to say that it can't ever affect the free and open internet. Rather, the idea of a free and open internet is usually tied to another term called net neutrality. Now, this is a copyright reform advocacy podcast and not an internet advocacy podcast. I won't go into details of this term. If you want more information, I recommend you check out the docu-fiction film called The Internet Must Go. Anyway, just know that net neutrality is the concept that says internet must be free and open, that every part of the internet must be treated freely and equally in terms of accessibility, speed, and content. The SEC passed strong rules earlier this year on net neutrality, reclassifying the internet under Title II of the Telecommunications Act. However, in terms of net neutrality and the TPP, 
it's not touched on in the intellectual property chapter where more damages to the free and open internet are found. Rather, it's found in the e-commerce chapter in a form that's so weak it's laughable. It states that the negotiating nations merely recognize the benefits of consumer choices and say a few things here and there to make it sound like it's talking about net neutrality. The fact is that because of its weakness, it can actually prevent the ability to create an international standard for net neutrality. Second, while they're right in saying that copyright laws don't change, at least in terms of what is and what is not illegal, the penalties for copyright infringement, even in non-commercial settings, are significantly higher. For instance, typically speaking, non-commercial infringement of copyright, whether it was for piracy or even if it was something you believe was for use of content online, has a less likely chance of facing criminal penalties. But under the TPP, if such infringement was willful and on a commercial scale, then you can be found guilty of criminal copyright infringement. Also worth noting is that the worst parts of existing copyright law will become the standard of that law and it cannot be changed in any reforms once the DBP becomes law. For instance, the anti-circumvention clauses under the DMCA are being exported in the TPP and even if the act of circumventing DRM, for example, is for non-infringing purposes, the TPP mandates it has to be a separate illegal act. In fact, even if Congress wants to do away with this part of the law, but the TPP is in effect, they will be unable to make legislation to remove anti-circumvention provisions of the DMCA. Also, even though there are a few pro-user parts of the TPP, the balance is only the surface appearance. Anything that is pro-user, like the need for free use, is non-binding, while anything that is pro-rice holder is binding. This means that other nations would be able to create the most unbalanced changes to copyright law and still be in good standing with the TPP. Another thing that will be locked in under the TPP is the duration of copyright. As I said before, copyright lasts for a fixed amount of time before it enters the public domain for others to use. Under current US law, that duration is a lifetime plus 70 years. However, under most other countries in the TPP agreement, including Canada, their duration is shorter, such as a lifetime plus 50 years. This means more works will be retroactively protected under copyright. However, a lifetime plus 70 years is the minimum that copyright can last under the TPP. This means that more works will be retroactively protected under copyright with the only party benefiting being rights holding corporations. Congress would one day be able to change duration of copyright law but only if it's longer than 70 years after the author's death. In fact, economy experts say that extending copyright duration makes no economic sense and will do more harm than good. If you are sued for copyright infringement and lose, the TPP says that many things disproportionate to any actual harm for infringement is fair game for assessing how much you owe them in damages. Worse yet, if you lose a case for copyright infringement, Anything that was used to do the infringing activities can be seized and destroyed. The same thing can be done if you are caught circumventing technological measures. Imagine what would happen if a teen that was pirating video games caused the authorities to seize 
the whole family's only computer and destroy it. Not even considering if the family's tax records are only found on that computer. That scenario could become a reality once the TPP is in effect. ISP liability is usually protected under the DMCA's notice and takedown procedure. However, other countries involved have a less restrictive procedure, such as Canada with their notice and notice procedure, and Chile, which requires a court to sign off on a takedown before any material can be removed. These exceptions may be grandfathered into the TPP, but those are only effective for those countries and any future TPP party will have to establish the notice and takedown procedure. Now you might be thinking, in episode 2, you mentioned you didn't contest with that law as long as everything is balanced and done properly. You're right. But the TPP has something especially concerning, which is even reminiscent of SOPA. Online service providers and internet service providers will have legal incentives to, and I quote, cooperate with copyright owners to deter the unauthorized storage and transmission of copyrighted materials or, in the alternative, to take actions to deter the unauthorized storage and transmission of copyrighted materials. This may sound good on paper, but consider this. Even though the TPP does have a clause allowing penalties for acts such as misrepresentation under the DMCA, it's thing to say that this clause can't be used to reward service providers for removing content that is legally allowed under fair use, and they are, in fact, not liable for doing so under the TPP. Even outside of the intellectual property chapter, the TPP has something that can endanger fair use. This is something known as an Investor State Dispute Settlement, or ISDS. The ISDS would essentially allow any international corporation to sue a nation's government if a law there is infringing on their profitability. The ISDS procedure allows a movie studio that has international offices the ability to sue the U.S. government over for use. The ISDS process could essentially make fair use illegal and it would then have to be ripped from the books, which is something that the courts have said in the past is unconstitutional. Or what about orphan works? An orphan work is a copyrighted work that due to one reason or another, such as the original copyright holder being deceased, the ability to get permission to use a copyrighted work is not possible, and using the work without permission is legally risky. There has long been concern with the Copyright Office over this, wanting to pass reforms that could essentially be used to limit liability if the copyright holder of an orphan works steps out and sues the user for copyright infringement. Not only does the TPP have no consideration to the orphan work problem, but this is another issue where an ISDS dispute can arise. Suppose Congress did pass a law that addresses the issue in a way that the Copyright Office was satisfied with. An ISDS can be issued to the U.S. and if such a law is deemed illegal, the law has to be removed from the books. And this is not just a hypothetical threat. In another trade agreement in Australia, an ISDS dispute was filed by the big tobacco manufacturer Philip Morris because it was, and I quote, not able to utilize their trademark. And yes, a trademark is another form of intellectual property due to Australia's tobacco plain packaging laws. Let's hope that the TPP won't be used to undo all the tobacco industry reform done in the US as well. The TPP will negatively impact a lot of people even in cases outside of the reach of intellectual property chapter or copyright law. For innovators and business owners, 
DRM and tougher penalties for non-commercial copyright infringement can prevent innovation that copyright law is meant to foster. For libraries, museums, and archives, the TVP's restrictive copyright regime and potential extension of copyright duration will make it harder to preserve copyrighted works. For students, educational uses of copyrighted material, even in cases that would normally be allowed under U.S. law, such as under the Fair Use Doctrine or other exceptions to copyright protection, can be made criminally illegal under the TPP. Not to mention the cost for textbooks potentially remaining expensive because of longer copyright duration. For website owners, not only does the TPP encourage them to police their own networks for copyright infringing content, but the domain name may cause privacy concerns, as the TPP requires certain domain names to have the real name, address, and other content and personally identifiable information about its owner published publicly. For gamers, sharing information on how to modify games that circumvent DRM, even in cases where piracy is not the reason for the circumvention, is illegal. Also, gamers who upload Let's Play footage, which is footage of gameplay with additional commentary, while it typically falls under fair use, the TPP makes such acts more legally risky. For whistleblowers and investigative journalists, under the TPP's intellectual property chapter, revealing a corporate trade secret that is accessed, disclosed, or made available to your computer system can have criminal or civil penalties, even if it is done with journalistic usage rights or even if the trade secret exposes corporate wrongdoing. In other words, the TPP could be the next Edward Snowden's worst nightmare. For people with disabilities, this is convention clauses and a more restrictive copyright regime can prevent people from accessing textbooks or other digital materials in a more accessible format. This is an extremely important concern for me. I have Asperger's Syndrome, and one of my accommodations I get at the college I attend is the ability to get books in an alternative format, such as audiobooks or PDF files, assuming I legally purchase a copy of the textbook to comply with copyright law. The TPP can make this service criminally illegal, or at least legally risky. Those who take or repair digital equipment from computers to computerized parts of cars, and even entertainment systems, some modifications will become legally risky under tougher anti-circumvention parts of copyright law. Those who make open source software would be able to create license requirements to keep them open source because the TPP makes it illegal for countries to require software to be imported under open source licenses. Last, but certainly not least, not only could anime, cartoon, and movie fans be made criminals for their fan-made works online, even if it's allowed under the Fair Use Doctrine, but cosplayers could also be found to be criminals due to the copyright and trademarks of the works being cosplayed. Keep in mind, Obama wants this to be all passed under a free trade deal. Sounds a lot like it, right? As you can see, the TVP is just as toxic, if not more so, than the Stop Online Piracy Act. But it's not just the general public who doesn't want the TPP to become law. Several politicians are opposed to the TPP, including several presidential candidates. Can you believe that out of all the things they would agree on, Democratic presidential candidate Bernie Sanders and Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump agree on opposing the TPP? Putting that for politics. 
and I think it's time for a roundtable discussion to get going on this topic. Let's join me, Seth Wani, and Caitlin Wren on the monstrosity of the TPP right now. Okay, so we're in our roundtable discussion now, and we're going to start with general thoughts on the TPP, or Trans-Pacific Partnership. Uh, any thoughts? Well, I honestly don't know much about the TPP because I don't have enough time to look at it, and I even asked my dad about it. He doesn't want to get into it. But all I know is is that Barack Obama wants to pass it to 11 different countries and for, and quote, unquote, to be fair with other countries and that. And personally, I say it's a bunch of crap to do it because uh, why why make everybody fair? Because you go, you're go you in the United States for a free country. You go to China for a reason. You go to Russia for a reason. You go to Hawaii for a reason. And if you make countries all fair in the same way, or TPP, etc. That's just the stupidest thing on the face of the planet to be able to be share, uh, be uh, safe, and be the same all the time and whatnot. Because World War One, World War Two wasn't it wasn't fair. That's just the plain it. The reason we have wars is because it's not fair, and that's why we're America is the way it is. It's a free country for a reason. So with that, and be on TPP, where if you want to ask the question of where do you stand with it, I am totally against it. I think it should not even exist. Why are we going to different countries saying, hey, shake our hand, we'll do something fair and nice and be all the same thing? Why do that? That doesn't make any sense to me. Seth knows way more than I do about this topic. Well, that too, I mean, and copyright, uh, the, the copyright should be the same in all the countries. No, it really shouldn't be. The reason why every country is because of a country is because of its different beliefs, different things, different ways to do it. China is a communist country, or I think China is a communist country, right? Yeah, it's so, communist. Yeah, yeah China, China is a communist country for a reason. Same way we're a, or we are a free country for a reason. Every country has a reason to be its country in itself. To make things fair and justice, that's just crying, I don't have my way, let's have it this way. That's just a bunch of bull****, honestly. But, you know, that's, that's my opinion. Uh, <clears throat> but... Uh, there, Those are really good points. Well, <laughs> well, it's just, I just hate politics. I love politics. I just hate it right now because there's so much stupid crap going on that things need to be fair and justice and whatnot. I don't watch the news. I don't watch politics. I don't read it. I don't read the newspaper. <laughs> okay. I just like entertainment. <laughs> okay, just to clarify what you... This is in the beginning, a brief geography lesson, Hawaii is not a country, it's the 50th state. States, yeah, I know, I, I said that uh, on a whim, so right. that's just the first name that came to mind. <laughs> uh, I know you sort of touched on this before, but so copyright duration, as in like the length copyright lasts, be expanded in other countries so that it matches the U.S. copyright duration? Nope. Any further, <laughs> any further thoughts? Nope, oh, because, because cause, uh, we're not playing fair, and they shouldn't play fair. So no one should play fair. If, so, if somebody wants the gold merchandise at the end of the table, they're going to get the gold merchandise at the end of the table for a price. What do you mean by that analogy? Meaning, we're just, we're just not going to give you that. We're just not going to match you. We're gonna You're going to fight for it. The same reason why we have jobs. We have jobs to fight for money. Which is what I. We're just not going to get money. Yeah, yeah. we're just not going to get money. You fight for it. So why should other countries or us match copyright just for the sake of being fair? Because everybody works their butt off for money. Yeah. Uh, well, the idea is that if cop, because I said before, copyright in the U.S. lasts a lifetime plus 70 years. Uh, in other countries, it's shorter, usually a lifetime plus 50 years. And what the TPP would do, if it does go into effect, is it would make the other countries make the minimum be the duration of a lifetime plus 70 years, just like the U.S. has it. So. And, and, and even though economic experts say that makes no sense, 
he's still pushing for it. And all that's really gonna do in the end is make rights holding corporations like major movie studios and major record labels all have more control over old musical movies, old whatever, that really should belong in the public domain. Mm-hmm. So, any further thoughts? Uh, each country should have its own laws, own rules, own copyright laws, and that's my own opinion. Own constitution. Yep. <laughs> yep. Okay. There, we, we are pretty much the only free country in the world, and that's for a reason. Okay. Uh, so, let's move on to uh, the criminal sanctions against copyright infringement in the TPP. Do you think that what's proposed is too strong? Say you make a parody of some sort, like you remix content uh, uh, and it falls under fair use normally. Uh, say that say that that remix, that parody or whatever, it goes viral. And under the TPP, even if the copyright holder doesn't necessarily object to it, it could technically be on a commercial scale and still be considered a criminal act. And what's even scarier is is obviously what would you use to make that? A computer. And under the TPP, not only could you face jail time and hefty fines, but the law, law enforcement authorities could literally storm in and seize your computer as a result of the so-called infringing activity. Mm-hmm. So... Well, that, that, should, that should be allowed. But T, TPP shouldn't even be... Shouldn't, shouldn't even exist. That's what I think. Shouldn't even exist. What's the point? Seriously. I, we have copyright laws, and that's all the further you need to go with it. The copyright laws, infringement, you have this and that, this and that, this and that. The reason why you have these laws is for that loss. The, re, the last thing we need is TPP, another law covering the copyright laws that expands into the world. What's the point? We're wasting our resources. We're wasting our tax dollars. We're wasting people who have other things to do. Any thoughts, Caitlin? What Seth said. And so, the, the idea of that defunct Bell SOPA versus the TPP, like, do you find them similar in any way? Do you find, how do you find them different? That sort of thing. Okay, SOPA is online trafficking, online infringement, online copyright law. TPP covers the exact same thing, only in other countries expanding to the world. That's the difference between TPP and SOPA. TPP is worldwide where SOPA is more in-country laws. You just made that so much easier. <laughs> yeah, well, th- well, that's what, that's what in, you know, in low art now, What's the word I'm looking for? In um, a nutshell. In a nutshell, that's what it is. So the difference between that and that is similar yet not similar because it's similar in its laws, but the TPP covers a war- more area that it shouldn't, again, even be allowed to. Okay, so just to clarify, you're saying that that SOPA and and the TPP in terms of content as to what they're saying are very similar, very uh, toxic in a sense, but the the difference being SOPA was a bill that was proposed to affect only the U.S., whereas the TPP would extend to other parts of the world. Correct. Okay, SOPA and TPP are similar, yet TPP covers more area. What are your thoughts on that? I don't have any. <sighs> I honestly don't have any thoughts. Yeah, well. All right, let's move on to the last last thing. Where do you stand on the TPP? So where, like, how do you do? You think it should become law, or should it just be thrown out? Thrown out. Thrown out in the trash. Gone. TPP or 
So no TPP. Sofa. So no. is so, already yeah yeah out, yeah. Tp. I mean, Sofa is already in law, but TPP. What do you that's think? It's not law. It's been thrown well, out. Right. I think they're all stupid. Well. <laughs> okay. All right. In terms of shortness. TPP should not be around. <laughs> so, anyways, TPP gone or not? Gone. Gone. Why? Because it's stupid. Why is it stupid? <laughs> it's my own opinion. Um, TPP, gone. Gone to Lily Do. Gone to Lily Do. <laughs> Chica, gone. Uh, anyway, that wraps up our roundtable discussion. Now, is the TPP even close to a good idea? The answer for me is a big fat no. There's little to no evidence that it will do anything to help free trade or the thing Obama wants it to be ratified for. Even if it does, can we really risk giving up much of our liberties in order to get it? The time to act on this is now. Contact your representatives in Congress. Tell them that you're opposed to the TPP. Other good places to take action against the TPP or find out more information about it are the internet advocacy groups Fight for the Future and the Electronic Frontier Foundation. I encourage each and every one of you to take action against the TPP and push for true copyright reform. Now, last week, I alluded to this being the last episode of All Rights Reserved. However, this episode will be the last episode of this first season. I never really got into what I think should be changed. I just got into the issues that affect what I feel are the bad parts of existing copyright law today. There's plenty more I can cover to keep this going. However, I don't know if or when I'll pick this up again. That being said, I enjoyed hosting the show and I'm thankful for all of my viewers. With that said, that wraps up today's episode of All Rights Reserved. I hope to continue this for another season if we get the chance and the time to do so. Until then, this is Rico Robbins signing off. <laughs>